spirit and in truth and also in our tithes. We pray now, Father, that you lift these tithes to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So I was looking at the calendar this morning. Uh, May 20th, 2018 was the first time Gail and I led worship together or, or praised God together in, in a church, and it was right here. So this is where we started six years ago. Um, I'd like to, this first song in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And this is a song about that, because his ways are higher than ours. God, I asked you to move that mountain. You invited me to climb. Lord, I asked you to part these waters. You said swim to the other side. It took a while, but I'm learning in time. Your ways are higher, higher than mine. Your love is an anchor in the raging tide. Your light shines brighter in the darkest night. Your ways are higher, higher than mine. So I got together and we're, we're praying and, and uh, she says well you need to keep praying and I said well if I pray to God for something and I ask him then aren't I disrespecting him if I just keep asking him not believing and she says oh no honey <laughs> you got to keep praying you got to keep praying Once more, till the answer comes, 
In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have It's, it's, uh, it's always a thrill for me to get to hear these two. You know, I've gotten uh, with my wife to several places, and I've heard a lot of gospel singers. 
uh, some of them are uh, multi millionaires because they've had huge hits. And you can't help but just enjoy the Dickens out of them. But they are performing. Some of them act like it. These two sing from their hearts. Amen. Simple as of that. And um, I love them. Love to listen to them. And I really hope when we uh, finish, I do know them well enough to know they're not going to run away. <laughs> But when we finish this morning, if you have time, uh, shake hands with them, hug them, do whatever you want to do, but let them know that you love them and that we appreciate them so very, very much. You know, grace is a gift. A gift is not something given to someone because they are deserving. A gift is something given by someone who loves you. And understanding that gift, that grace, understanding that is crucial I believe, to experiencing the abundant life that Jesus desires for you. I want us to reflect and ponder for a few minutes this thing called grace. Let everyone know that, yes, we were once under the law because of our sinful nature. And we were all condemned by it. But thank you, Lord, for the gift of grace that has been given to each one of us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, I can guarantee you this morning that the gift of grace is sufficient. Grace is used to explain the terms of kindness and graciousness as shown to us by God. The New Testament summarizes it, quote, as the unmerited and abundant gift of God's love and favor to mankind. In other words, without God, we cannot experience Grace. Without God, in fact, it is the best that people can do is give us a cheap copy of the real thing. In life, at times, we have difficulties. Difficulties understanding the unfairness of life. It's not fair that some people are hungry. It's not fair that some people are homeless, and some are jobless, some are motherless and fatherless. But when you think about it, is it fair that God sent his only son to earth to hang on a cross to protect us from our own sin? That is where grace that is sufficient enters the equation. God loves to give a gracious gift just given out of love. He loves us. And so he gave that to us. Understand that his grace is sufficient. No matter what we do, And this is the part <clears throat> that's hard for me. No 
matter what we do, no matter how many times we fall down, no matter how many times we stumble, no matter how many times we get off track, God has a relentless, undying, unquenchable love which can never separate us. Never. God's grace is sufficient. Someone may be sitting here this morning and asking, what is this thing called grace? Is it something we have to work at real hard to get? Is it something you obtain in order to be saved? Does it come from us treating others right? Does it come from loving your neighbor? The grace of God says we serve God because we are saved, not in order to be saved. Simple as that. We love our neighbor because we are saved not in order to get saved. Grace, it's our source of power when problems are great. Grace is the element of hope when we feel harassed or helpless. Grace allows us in times of trouble to look up instead of down. Grace enables us to calm down during hard times. But grace will not, will not enable us to escape the trials. Won't do it. You think you're going to have trials without grace? Hey. Wait till you try it with grace. <clears throat> Trials come. Grace is not going to blunt the pain. Grace will not erase or keep difficult times at bay. Daily irritations are still going to happen. But you know what's so reassuring? I'll tell you what's reassuring. God's grace is not dependent on our actions. God's grace is not dependent on us. The grace of God is given to us because he loves us. And because he is a God of second chances. That's why we get grace. He does not say there is a limit to his love. Nowhere does it talk about him having a limit of his mercy, but he simply lets us know that we get his grace regardless of our sin, regardless, his grace is always there for us. Grace is sufficient. Our past is not relevant when it comes to receiving his grace. Our sins can't keep us from getting his grace. His grace is the result of his outpouring of love for us. But Lord, you don't, you don't know him like I do. You don't know about all of those sins. 
You don't know about all those lies. You don't know. I, sometimes I can hear him say, shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. His grace comes from his love for us. Even as we stray from his ways, his grace heals, his grace renews. God's grace is sufficient. Don't ever doubt that. His grace is sufficient. Grace is always there. It's there even during peace, during joy, and when we're filled with happiness and have no apparent worries. <clears throat> grace is still there. It pours into our cup, overflowing, overflowing, so that when the next trial comes into our lives, we can be secure enough to say God's grace is sufficient, always has been, always will be. Grace removes our focus, removes our focus from our failures to our fulfillment. Jesus said, quote, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You think you've had life so far? You get Jesus and find out how a life, your life, can happen more abundantly more than you ever thought possible. If I was selling grace, how do you sell grace? How do you sell it? It's something God has and he wants to take care of you. Wants badly to take care of you. And he's got enough grace to make it happen. If I were selling it, I would say, God's grace saves you and me from our failures. It just saves us from anything we do. God's grace saves us from our sinful nature. I sin too much. I sin way too much. God will take care of you. I'd look at people and say, are you nuts? Are you crazy? God will take care of you. And he did. God's grace was provided to us when he sent down his son. He said, I've got an idea. I want to talk to you about it. You're going to turn into a new baby boy. You're going to go to earth. I'll give you 33 years. And you take all of their sins. Let's put it on your shoulders and save the world. Jesus didn't run from him. He didn't hide for a few years, let him think it over. <coughs> I'll do it. And you know the rest of the story. And that act that God
God did back then, well, since the beginning of time, God has offered another chance to all of us who have failed. Now we get another chance. Those who think that they flunked out in life, the grace of God allows you the opportunity to come back in and graduate with honors. We serve a God of second chances. And aren't you glad? God's grace is sufficient for me, for all of you. God's grace is sufficient. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your grace that changes people one at a time. I thank you for it. We all thank you. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll have a time of invitation.